Hey yo guys, I'm back here to give you my UFC Ultimate Fight Night 18 uh, predictions. Uh, UFC's Ultimate Fight Night uh, 18 takes place live tonight from the Summit Center in the debut for the UFC in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, really, they've put together a pretty strong card, a real strong, a real strong main event uh, with a pretty good supporting undercast. I have to uh, undercard, I should say. Um, really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, so let's just get to the predictions here. Of course, we got um, you know a bit of a card flip up. Uh, this original main event was supposed to be Jeremy Stevens versus Efron Escudero. Efron Escudero unfortunately suffers an injury in training, which forces Jeremy Stevens to be moved to fight uh, Gleason Tebow uh, now in a catchweight bout, which is on the undercard. And I guess because of all this, we have we had a new main event with uh, Carlos Condit taking on Martin Capman. Uh, which is a really good main event there, uh, which unfortunately uh, did, he didn't get to fight in the WC the last, I believe it was due to an injury to one of the two, or the UFC just decided they were going to disband the welterweight division in the WC and move it in. And his opponent on that card for Condit on that night in WEC was uh, Brock Lawson, Larson, and he's taking on Jesse Saunders on this as well in the undercard. Uh, but yeah, I think one of the positive things uh, looking at this card is uh, one of the fights I was on the undercard, which was Tyson Griffin versus uh, Rafael Dos Anjos. That gets moved up to the main card. Big thumbs up for me. Anyways, let's get to the predictions. Uh, the first fight is the most memorable Ultimate Fighter uh, cast member from last season, Junie Browning, taking on Cole Miller. Uh, how do you break this one down? Well, Junie Browning, his skills have absolutely improved since we saw him on the show. You know, he had real strong cardio in his last fight up against... Uh, Diamond David Kaplan, uh, you know, a former a guy on the same uh, sh show with him. Uh, he had real strong cardio. His stand-up was something to be mesmerized about is how vastly improved he was here. Um, you know, he spent time, he's been training with Extreme Couture, which, you know, is always a big uh, positive there. Uh, but the one thing I think uh, will be Junie's hindrance is the fact that he takes all these fights, you know, with an emotional... Uh, he has an emotional axe to grind with his opponent. He just makes the fights personal, which is something you know you really shouldn't do, uh, especially in the fight game. I mean, you're gonna lose your concentration for a second or so, um, and that's what I would see happening here. I mean, Cole Miller trains with just as strong a camp at AT American Top Team, and you know I think he's just gonna you know Junie's gonna start off strong, uh, which you know he I would expect him to, uh, but really I think you know. Miller will take him down, and then I think Cole Miller will just, you know, use his long limbs to grab a submission and get the victory at the end at, in the first round. That's how I see this one happening. I mean, Junior's vastly improving, but the key word is he's improving. He still has a long way to go. I think Cole will get the, the, the submission victory. Then we go on to the next fight, which just screams uh, awesome. Uh, for me, I'm really excited to see this one. It's Tyson Griffin versus Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, we all know how excellent of a wrestler Tyson Griffin is. I mean, he's got really good stand-up as well and, you know, adequate jiu-jitsu. Um, I think that's going to be a big uh, play big into his uh, favor here. Um, you know, Dos Anjos, you know, a, a real strong practitioner of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but um, I think basically this fight is going to be Griffin controlling, you know, the major controlling the fight on the ground, uh, making Dos Anjos have, you know, to try and pull a submission on the ground at least to get the victory, I think, but I think... Uh, that, you know, the amount of skill that Griffin has in uh, jiu-jitsu is going to be strong enough to, for him to get out of these predicaments and, you know, control the fight on the ground. And, you know, when it gets stand up, I think that, you know, that's another uh, place where Griffin has the advantage. I'm going to take Tyson Griffin via a decision. I don't know if he can knock out uh, Rafael Dos Anjos like Jeremy Stevens did, but remember that Jeremy Stevens got a run for his money at the hands of Rafael Dos Anjos back at UFC 91. So that's my thoughts here. And, you know, Griffin gave Sean Shirk a run for his money as well, but uh, going to take Tyson Griffin as well for a decision. I don't know if he can knock him out, but I think his game plan will be just control it on the ground, and if I when we stand up, I'm going to control it. I don't know if he'll look for a knockout, because we all know knockouts come uh, just sporadically, and that's my, I'm going to take Tyson Griffin by decision. Then we go to the next fight, which is Ryan Darth Bader versus uh, Carmelo Marrera. Really, this fight should be interesting. I mean, we have, you know, a vastly, really, his uh, Bader's skills are really improving. I mean, his stand-up is really, really 
uh, come a, a long way with the Arizona sport, uh, combat sports um, uh, camp that he's been training with. Uh, really, I mean, for a guy at 205, he hits really hard. I mean, just ask Vinny Magalesh. I mean, he rocked Vinny, you know, with a solid shot, and I believe you know, he also hit him, like, with his uh, forearm, and that dropped him as well. So uh, that's where I'm going to take Bader. I think, you know what, that if this fight, this fight could go to the ground as well, and I think maybe the first round will be that, where Bader, you know, uses his really strong uh, wrestling background to control the fight with Marrera. And, you know, he'd control it there. But I think he'd finish it in the second round with a TKO. Uh, so that's my prediction. Second round TKO, Ryan Bader. And he looks to continue to improve vastly in the UFC uh, to a lightweight, a lightweight division. Excuse me. Um, then we go to the next fight, which is the main event. And it's a fight I'm still going to say. This is actually a really interesting fight. Maybe one of the tougher fights you're going to have to pick um, going into a UFC car all this year. It's Carlos Condit versus Martin Katman. Uh, really, I'm looking forward to this fight a lot. I think, you know, both guys have, you know, the same sort of amount of skill. Vastly even. I mean, Condit has a lot to live up to. I mean, he has, uh, you know, eight fight winning streak. Um, he's been getting a lot of hype, not only from, you know, the fans of mixed martial art, but uh, Dana White himself. And the UFC's even taking, you know, drastic measures just to, you know, show how real good of a fighter he is by, on the Spike website, they put up uh, his fight, his last fight at the WEC 30, or his, his last WEC 30 fight at WEC 35, when he took on uh, uh, Hiromitsu Mira, which was an excellent fight on an awesome show. I believe I, I did name that show Fight of the Year for uh, MMA. I thought that show was just fantastic, top to bottom. Um, but yeah, I mean, Catman, really strong fighter. I mean, he's got a, a good kickboxing background. Um, but really, you know, his stand-up and, you know, his, uh, he's got, you know, a strong enough amount of ability to pull out a submission as well. He's not just a boxer or whatnot, which is more so where he would be. But he can really, you know, knock, he can do a great job on the stand-up. And even on the ground, he can pull out a submission. But, like I said, Condit has all the, uh, hype to live up to. You know, he's the former, the last WEC welterweight champion and all that hype around him but really this is a head or tails pick how, how you see it going to me i think that you know condit has got the strong wrestling and would keep it there for you know a bit of the fight but i don't think i don't think condit wants to get a decision but i think that's where it would be i think catman may be too tough to stop uh i think he's just too tough to stop you know for sure maybe i just think he's too tough to stop that's really what i do think uh, i truly believe I'm going to take, you know, Condit by decision, and what should be a hell of a fight. Um, hopefully we can get something like uh, Griffin versus Bonner fight, or something of that nature, a Guida versus uh, uh, a Huerta fight. You know, that's something I'm looking forward to between these two. Would be awesome if we get it. I think this has all the potential to happen. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it's more so exciting to see someone like of the likes of Carlos Condit, uh, a lot of people put him up there in the top, you know, top five in the welterweight division. You know, one of the dream fights was when Condit was you know, a wrecking machine in the WEC was to maybe get a GSP versus Carlos Condit fight. That looks like it could be, potentially happen now. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this card. And I'll hit you with my review tomorrow. Like I said it's a busy weekend with WrestleMania and all these other MMA events and even the uh, Kendall Holt versus Timothy Bradley fight uh, coming up on Saturday. Uh, but anyways, that's it for me. I am... Uh, oh, of course, we have the... Uh, before I leave, uh, we got... Also, remember to stay tuned for the debut of the uh, Ultimate Fighter Season 9, US versus UK. Looks like a pretty interesting show. I mean, I find it kind of interesting how Dana White kind of bashed how the UFC did the uh, UFC 58 Canada versus the United States. But, you know, that's one of the bases of the shows. But I think, you know, that's more of a better TV concept, more so than a pay-per-view concept as... You know, you have more weeks to stretch things and stuff, and it's just, you know, one week. Uh, unless you're doing, like, a series or something like that, like, you know, a game series, like, you know, in hockey or something of that nature, it would have worked, but for one paper, it doesn't work. But the TV series, I think it'll be fine. Uh, you know, we got two good coaches and Dan Henderson and uh, Michael Bisbing, um, and should be, you know, great. Uh, of course, their final, they're going to meet at UFC 100, which is looking like to be the most stacked pay-per-view uh, of all time for the UFC. Uh, you got Lesnar Mir, you got GSP versus uh, Diego Alves, and of course this Henderson versus Bisping fight, which is going to have, you know, weeks and months of build on television, which is just awesome. 
I'm really looking forward to that pay-per-view when it happens. But yeah, hopefully you stick around to it. Um, I know that I think the first episode is uh, trying to finalize Team UK. Uh, really looking forward to it. Anyways, uh, hopefully it's as good as the last season as I love the last season. And yeah, but anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.